I hope you got everything you wanted on Record Store Day 2023, but if you missed out on Charlie Parker's release and you're wondering whether you should seek out one on the secondary market, I'll give you my thoughts so you can make a better informed decision. treat were you thinking why is this guy cleaning his new records i know I, if you've watched all my videos you know that i've said this every time it's probably getting old for you but i'm not clean your records i definitely cleaned my new records because um yeah you never know the pressing plant's not really cleaning your records for you in most cases right so you take them out they've got dust oftentimes if you have paper sleeves they're gonna have paper paper sleeve residue on them um grime in the in the grooves and all that stuff so that's why I clean my, my new records, as well as my used records. All right, anyway, I just listened to this two record reissue. Uh, well, not reissue, but all of the music on these records have appeared before. Uh, this is just the first time they've been collected in one place. Charlie Parker is such an important artist in the history of jazz, but because his recordings were originally released on 78 RPM and 10 inch albums, it can be difficult to know where to start when putting together a collection of his best work. While I have previously had Charlie Parker records in my collection, I did not currently have a single Bird record when I bought this, and it's a great way to have some Parker back in the collection. Charlie Parker, the long lost Bird live Afro Cubop recordings, that's a mouthful. And as I said, this is really a compilation. I'm gonna get into this record, but let me quickly tell you about the current subscriber giveaway I'm running. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I'm still trying to give away this masterpiece, and if you subscribe, you will have a chance to add it to your collection. This is John Coltrane, Blue Train, The Complete Masters, Tone Poet, 2LP edition. Sounds great. And wouldn't it be great to spin this on your turntable? All right, so about this record. Um, other musicians on this release include Woody Herman, the great Ray Brown, Art Blakey, Stan Kenton, Milt Jackson, and of course, Dizzy Gillespie. Really a who's who of bebop. The cover design and photography on this record does not disappoint. This is a great photo of Bird, and I love this retro font they use for the title. So this is actually a great way to get started with Charlie Parker. These are some amazing tunes. And Rockbeat Records did a great job with the mastering and the sequencing of these tunes. First of all, we have to be realistic. These are not perfect recordings. These tunes were made as far back as the 1940s. So let's talk about the music. In my opinion, Dizzy Gillespie is the godfather of jazz and the greatest trumpet player of all time. And his work with Bird just makes me smile. I just love hearing these two together. These recordings swing so hard. Song one is a bebop masterpiece with Al Haig on piano, Milt Jackson on vibes, Ray Brown on bass. I mean, what more do you want? I only wish this record included more than one tune with that lineup. Fortunately though, Dizzy accompanies Bird all over this record, which is a real treat. On this record, you get Dizzy Atmosphere, A Night in Tunisia, Groove and High, Salt Peanuts, Manteca, the list just goes on and on. And this is one of my favorite eras of jazz when bebop was in full swing. Did I mention these tunes swing hard? This whole record is a highlight reel. I already mentioned all the great tunes and the fact that Dizzy's fingerprints are all over this. That's obviously not to take anything away from Bird. His playing on here is obviously top notch. As for the pressing, I mean, the pressing is about as good as you can expect, all things considered. I hate even being critical of the pressing, but I don't want some viewers to think they're going to get something that sounds like a late 60s blue note session. The presentation is very nice, the selection of tunes are awesome, and this was actually the most affordable offering I picked up on Record Store Day 
at about 45 bucks. I think all we know about the mastering is that it was remastered by Randy Wine. So final thoughts, this record is for bop fans that don't already own these tunes on other records. This is a fantastic introduction to Charlie Parker, early bop, or even Dizzy Gillespie. But if you can't deal with old recordings that don't sound like they were laid down yesterday, then this record might not be for you, which would be a shame because I hate to tell you this, you are missing out on a real gem of an era with this early stuff. And it's really about the only way you can experience a lot of Parker's best stuff. So if you're wondering whether you should track down this killer Parker compilation, I would say yes. If you don't already have the tunes on other records and you know what you're getting into with these old recordings, I think this will be a real treat. All right, so that's gonna do it with my review of Charlie Parker's The Long Lost Bird Live Afro Cubop Recordings. <sighs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.